In today's video, the best 10 dumbbell movements to do at home for guys over 50. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravello from ProPhysique.com and I got natural Mr. Olivia John Hansen with me, also a coach here at ProPhysique.com. And if, up, you're, if you're looking for coaching, you better hurry because he's uh, <laughs> filling up quick. Yeah. Um, but today we went in the gym and we wanted to do a video where we discussed some dumbbell exercises because I think a lot of people have access to dumbbells. Yeah. Um, and we kept them pretty basic. Dumbbells and a bench was really the only equipment you needed. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the movements we did today and, and how you like to apply them to your training. Yeah, what we're doing today is we're just gonna do like a full body workout with just a bench and dumbbells. So a lot of people have this in their homes and uh, they don't have access to gym sometimes. So this is a great way to get in a full body workout real quick, doing one exercise per body part. So we started off with uh, chest. We did uh, incline dumbbell presses and uh, we put the bench on a 30 degree incline and um, you're just bringing the dumbbells down to your shoulders, pressing them up. And this primarily hits the chest, shoulders, triceps, but it really hits the upper chest. Yeah, and I like starting with an upper chest movement because I think most of us have a little bit more thickness in our lower pec from right. years of starting with flat benching and things like that. So. I like starting with an upper chest movement to, to, to add some thickness here. Um, you know, it's the principle of, you know, doing the exercise you need the most assistance with first, right? So we did that first and then followed right. it up with a flat bench. And also when you get over 50, uh, a lot of guys have rotator cuff problems. So the flat bench tends to hurt more of the rotator cuff than the incline. So by putting up, starting with an incline, puts a little bit of less stress on your shoulders. Well, I'm over 40 and I have uh, rotator cuff issues already. So yeah, I can definitely feel that. And I, I agree. You know, it doesn't seem like it would make sense logically. Like it seems like that's a more difficult movement because yeah. you use less weight. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like it is better for the shoulder. It does not bother me at all. Yeah, yeah, that's the, my experience too. The flat dumbbell press, since we're already warmed up with the incline, mm -hmm. now we can get into a movement that might have a little more range of motion in the shoulder. Right, yeah. And this is an exercise that hits, I think, more the outer part of your chest, uh, the middle part of your chest. So it's another great movement. It can be done again with dumbbells and a bench and it hits primarily the chest. You're also hitting the front part of your shoulders a little bit and your triceps. Yeah, so a lot of the movements that we did today, you're hitting multiple movements. Anytime you have a compound movement like a, a press, you're hitting a pec, a shoulder, a tricep, but the primary mover should be focused around your chest. So you wanna make sure you're keeping your shoulders back, you're not rolling them forward. You're not locking and putting too much emphasis on the tricep. You wanna make sure you're using your chest for the pressing movements. And then we moved into our shoulders. Yes. So we did uh, the basic seated dumbbell press, just pressing the dumbbells straight up. Uh, very basic movement. This gets the front part of your shoulders, the anterior head of the shoulders. And it's, you're also working your triceps, so it is a compound movement. Um, just real basic movement, but a great movement for the shoulders. Yeah, the, the shoulder press after, you can really feel the, the anterior deltoid being the focus, right? right? Because we're completely changing the angle of our bodies to being upright. Mm -hmm. um, I notice you tend to have a very, your, your elbow is right in line with your shoulder. I tend to bring it in just a little bit more, but I think that's just a range of motion thing that feels better for me. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something everyone should do is find that range that, that feels best for them. Whatever feels good, right, exactly. And then we did the side lateral. Yeah, we did the side lateral. This is for the medial head of the deltoids, the side deltoids. And this is what gives you that wide look when you're standing to the front, relaxed, uh, whether you're competing or not. Um, it gives your shoulders a little more width. Yep. And uh, it's a very strict movement. You don't need a lot of weight with this exercise. I would recommend just actually going a little bit lighter to get the feel of it. And you're bringing the arms straight out to the side with the arms really straight. And your palms are facing the floor when you get to the top of the movement. Yep. And this sets again the medial part, medial head or the side dumbbell. One thing I love about a side lateral dumbbell raise is that like if you're traveling and there's a gym in the hotel, they might not have very much dumbbells, but they're gonna have plenty of weight for doing a side lateral. Yeah. And it does give you that capped, rounded delt look that mm -hmm. it's kind of the only movement that hits the medial delt. I mean, yeah. you're getting a little bit in other movements, but you can really tell when you've been doing them for a few weeks, the change in the look of your shoulder. Yeah, exactly. All right, so now we went into a back movement which was, there's not a lot of opportunity for back movements with dumbbells, I feel like. Yeah, right. We did the one-arm dumbbell row, yep. which uh, we put our knee and our hand on the bench for support. Yep. And then we used our other hand to uh, row the dumbbell up. And I just do this, I just row it straight up to feel the lat muscles, the back muscles. And another great basic compound movement gets the lats, also gets the biceps. Yep. And how you move the dumbbell is gonna change how it's hitting you. I really like to do kind of a sweeping motion. I notice John comes a little more up, 
So depending on that, you're gonna feel it a little bit differently in your back, but the back is gonna be the big mover there. Um, and again, if you don't have a bench, sometimes I'll go to the gym and I'll just lean on the dumbbell rack. Yeah. Um, or if you're in a hotel gym. So it's, it's another one of those great full body movements that you can engage a lot of the back muscles, which are some of the biggest muscles in our body. Mm -hmm. We don't get to see them in the mirror, so sometimes people forget about them, mm -hmm. but, they're, but they're, right. they're big. Right. Um, and then let's move into the like accessory upper body. We did, uh, we did a unique curl today. Yeah, we did the, uh, they call it a spider curl. Yeah. So you're leaning against a high incline bench and you're just curling the dumbbells straight up. And this is a really good moment to isolate the biceps. It really gets a really good peak contraction in the arms when you get to the top of the movement. Yeah, I think most of us tend to do some kind of a swing when we're doing a bicep curl, but when, you, when you're laying over doing a spider curl, you just keep that elbow locked. You don't have to use a ton of weight. Again, this is another great movement. Now, of course, you can just do a standing dumbbell curl, mm -hmm. but I think there's been a lot of videos of that, so I thought it would be fun to kind of add like a, a little twist to a bicep right. curl. Something unique. And honestly, there's a lot of tension at the top yeah. because you're leaning forward, whereas when you're standing, there's not as much tension. So Yeah, I think we were using 20-pound dumbbells, and I really felt it at the top. Yeah, so if you haven't tried a, a dumbbell curl like that, like a spider curl leaning over a bench, definitely give that a try. And then we moved into our tricep movement, which was kind of a unique one as well. Yeah, another kind of unique movement. We did a higher incline bench, laying against it, bringing the arms straight up, and then we're getting a really good stretch. This is like an incline tricep extension. Yeah. But one thing I try to focus on when I'm doing that is just keeping my body quiet. I want to keep my shoulders locked and just focus on just extending from the elbow, mm -hmm. extending my wrist forward and not letting there be a lot of motion in the shoulders. Yeah. Uh, especially as we get a little bit older, like John was saying, you know, you want to make sure you're taking care of your rotator cuff. Focus on the muscle you're training and try not to get hurt. So. Also doing it with dumbbells, it seemed like there was a little bit less stress in the elbows. Yeah. You know, when you use a barbell, you're locking in to a certain position. Uh, with the dumbbells, you got a little more range of motion. You got a little more freedom, so you can try to find yep. an angle that doesn't hurt you. Yeah, I, I really like that, and you can you can literally feel the fibers moving in both directions. So there are a little bit of twists. You know, you can do a, a, a two-handed version of that. You can do a barbell version, but if you haven't done the dumbbell version, I definitely recommend that. Uh, and then I think we just went into some lower body stuff. Yeah, we did some legs. Um, we didn't have any squat racks, of course. We're just using dumbbells on a bench, yep. but we did do uh, some dumbbell squats and we squatted down until our butts hit the bench yes to make sure we were going low enough and uh, i think both of us did it really slow and controlled went down slow and then come back up yeah now the goal here is you know as you get a little bit older your mobility can change if john wanted to go a little bit deeper we could have put a plate under his feet right we could have augmented the movement in that way but this way you're doing a safe movement you can control the weight we held equal weights in both hands so we could easily increase the weight or decrease the weight as mm -hmm. needed um, and with lower body movements you definitely want to get enough reps where you're starting to feel yourself burn a little bit. So we did a good amount of reps with that. And then we did another unique movement, which I haven't done a lot of times, but I felt today. Yeah, this is kind of like a stiff-legged deadlift. One leg back, slightly back, and yep. then you can really feel the leg that's in front. You can yes. really feel the contraction in both the hamstring and the glute. It was a really good movement. Yeah, what I liked about it was if you're going to go heavy with like a stiff-legged deadlift, you end up having to hold two heavy dumbbells. Mm -hmm. Well, this actually just made it so you can go heavier on a single leg without having to hold more weight. Right. So there's good potential there for training with a lot more safety. And again, this is, you know, meant to be training as a safe individual over the age of 40 or 50 or whatever your age is and just making sure you're training to your abilities. Uh, and then we finished with a, a unique calf raise on the on the, the bench. Right, we can't forget the calves. Yeah, <laughs> can't, <laughs> can't have skinny calves. So we did uh, one-legged calf raise holding a dumbbell on the same leg that we were working. And I uh, just used the other arm for support on the bench and just went up real slow and real, all the way down and all the way up to really feel the contraction. In the yeah, I think calves is one of the movements that I cringe the most in the gym when I see someone doing it because they're typically bending their knees a lot and yeah. shoving the weight up where if you lower the weight and you just let your heel come up and down, you're really gonna feel the calves get engaged and yeah. that's how they're gonna grow. Yeah, I think we use it. And again, like a 20 or 30 pound dumbbell, yeah. very light. Oh, in the last couple reps, I was definitely like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> so yeah, so guys, hopefully this was a, a good starter for you guys. We do have some free programs on ProPhysique.com if you're looking for some free programs, um, including some push-pull leg splits. But if you wanna find John, he's got a YouTube channel. I'm gonna link that below as well. Anything else, John? No, that's it, Paul. All right, we did work workout. Talk to you tomorrow.